Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us stand. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking henceforth in his holy way, let us bless God today. Let us simply say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Tell me who has the final say Jehovah has the final say And no matter what the finally say Jehovah has the final say And no matter what the doctor say Jehovah has the final say I have, I have no reason to fear the Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. Tell me who has the final say? Jehovah has on, the final say. Tell me who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Let me see. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent our sorry, we are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. I love you Lord and I live as we approach a new season, praising his name. 
Let us all stand and continue praising our Lord and Savior by singing holy, 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 Lord God of hosts.
days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near this is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah a voice of one calling in the wilderness prepared the way for the Lord Make straight paths for him. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. It's prayer time, church. First Sunday in December. God has brought us a mighty long way. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to go before the throne of God. Total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Jesus, Jesus, precious Lord, we love you more than anything because you first loved us. And we thank you, Lord. Precious God, from on high, we come this morning just giving you the glory, the honor, and the thanks, for you are an awesome God, an awesome wonder, a God that can do all things but fail, and we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence in this worship service today, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you will receive the glory and honor that all things that is done today, Lord Jesus. Let it be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord. Have your way in this worship service, Lord, today. That souls will be saved. Lives will be transformed. Everyone will stay on you, Lord Jesus. For you are God and God alone. Thank you, Jesus. So much, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So much has happened in our lives today, and we just say thank you, Lord. You carried us, Lord Jesus, through the highways and the byways. From the hurt and the pain, you shield us, Lord Jesus. You protected us, Lord Jesus, from the tragedies of this world, Lord Jesus. And we say thank you, Lord. We are just so grateful right now, Lord Jesus. We're sending up the praises to you, Lord Jesus. Shower down the blessings upon each and every one that's under the sound of my voice in the presence of this sanctuary. In the airways, Lord Jesus. Have your way today, Lord Jesus. Have your way in our lives, Lord Jesus, that you will receive the glory, that your kingdom will be built here on earth, Heavenly Father, that you've called us to do. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus.
I don't know about everyone else, Lord, but there's so much that I'm thankful for that you carried me this week. You blessed me, Lord Jesus. You prepared me for what you've called me to do, Lord Jesus. And I say thank you. And those under the sound of my voice say thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. There's so much going on in this world, so much turmoil. But we know that you are in the midst of it and working it out for our good, Lord Jesus, because you are in control. You are in control of all things, Lord Jesus. Some have come with heavy hearts. We ask that they lay it down on the altar, that it will be released unto you. Some have come with broken hearts, Lord Jesus. But they're coming today that you will be the mender of their broken hearts, Lord Jesus. Some have called to be restored, Heavenly Father. We're calling on you to restore them and the restoration be upon their lives today, Lord Jesus. Some need a healing. Mm. Touch them. Touch them one by one, Lord Jesus, from the head of their crown to the sole of their feet. That the healing will commence in their bodies, Lord Jesus. That your Holy Spirit will dwell and not only dwell but grow in them, Lord Jesus. Prepare that place for us, Lord Jesus. Prepare it, Lord Jesus, and we say thank you. That we will be ready. When you call on each and every one of us to do thy will, let your will be done, Lord Jesus. Let it be done, Heavenly Father, that you call each and every one of us to a task in the body of Christ, that we will do your blessed will. Mm. Grateful, just truly grateful. Bless the leaders of this country, Lord Jesus. Bless President Biden. Bless Vice President Harris. Bless the former presidents, Lord Jesus, for they need you right now, Lord Jesus, that they may speak the utterance of your will, Lord Jesus, not thy will. Let it be done, Lord Jesus. Touch them all, Lord Jesus. Touch them right now, not only in this country, but across the nation, Lord Jesus, touch them. Only you can soften their hearts, Lord Jesus, that they will do what you've called them to do for your people. Touch them right now, Lord Jesus. We're asking for a special touch right now, Lord Jesus. Special touch for our leader, Reverend Clayton. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Touch our pastor right now, Lord Jesus. Continue to fill him up where he needs to be filled, Lord Jesus, as he continues to pour out the word to your people, not only in the word, but in his teaching, Lord Jesus. Fill him up. Fill him up, Lord Jesus. Pour into him as he pours out into us the teaching of your holy word, Lord Jesus, that we will not only be listeners, but we will be doers of your blessed will, Heavenly Father, that we will go out and be disciples that you've called us to do, to win souls for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless him right now, Lord Jesus. Anoint him as he brings forth the word. Touch our first lady, Lord Jesus, for she's doing mighty, mighty works in your kingdom here on earth, Heavenly Father. Touch her right now, Lord Jesus. Comfort her. Continue to comfort and give her the peace that surpasses all understanding. Heal her right now, Lord Jesus. Mend her broken heart, Lord Jesus, that she can continue to pour out to those that are near and far in this world today, Lord Jesus. Bless our first family. Bless Walter's family collectively and individually. We just come today just to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due to you. And we say thank you, Lord. Bless the bishops down to the buds of our denomination and all the churches that are planted in your name. Bless them, Lord Jesus. 
and we lift you up on high today and we say thank you Lord Amen Oh! 
from one de degree of grace to another. Our text for today is Isaiah chapter number 40, beginning at verse 3. I'll pray first. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak to the inner person and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Through Christ Jesus we ask these blessings. Amen and amen. Isaiah 40, beginning at verse number three. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. Oh, praise his name. I want to talk from this thought this morning. Do you hear the voice in the wilderness? Do you hear the voice in the wilderness? Isaiah begins with the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The voice prophesied was that of John the Baptist. The Bible confirms the same thing in Malachi. Also, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John also talk about this, this, this topic. The question is, who was John talking to? Are y'all still here? Who was he talking to proclaiming this message of repentance to all who would hear him? 
those who have ears, let them hear, which would be all those who God is working his will through his power of the Holy Spirit. If God is using your life, your hands, your mind to do his work, he's speaking to you. Are you still listening to me? What did the voice say? And what did he call on his audience to do? He said, prepare the way of the Lord. Then the instructions become more pacific. He says, make straight in the desert a highway of our God. Every valley exalted. Every valley exalted? Every mountain and hill made low and the crooked places made straight. And the rough places smooth. He's fixing the way, y'all. Fill up the valleys and remove the tops of the mountains. This seems like a lot of work for mere man. This is where the will and power of God comes in. Why? Are we doing this? So that is the glory, that the glory of the Lord may be revealed in all flesh. See it together. One of the commentaries, uh, Barnes, he, he remarks on these verses. He says, the idea is taken from the practice of Eastern monarchs, who whenever they entered on a journey or an expedition, especially through barren and uncultivated or inhospitable country, they would send forerunners before them to prepare the way. To do this, it was necessary for them to provide supplies, to make bridges, and to find fording places over the streams, to, to level hills and to construct causeways over valleys and fill them up and to make a way through the force that might lie in their intended way of travel. He, they were fixing and preparing the way. <laughs> Y'all still here? Right now we find ourselves in a wilderness the Old Testament tells us the Israelites wandered 40 years between Egypt and Canaan. Now, we've been wandering in a wilderness of COVID for three years or better. They're, 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 the wilderness is, is, is a place where mass killings are taking place. Every week before you can get rid of it on one newscast, here it's like up all over again. We used to can't predict who would be doing this mass killing, but you can't predict that anymore. All kinds of people are doing this nowadays. Then we have inflation, and some families are dealing with death, one death after another. The wilderness could be a place where you have absolute uncertainty around you. The wilderness is a place where no predictable end is in sight. The wilderness is that season when you have more questions than answers. You're wondering, you're wondering what's going on. You're wondering when and how you will actually get out. In the wilderness, resources are scarce. People we love die. In the wilderness, you lose confidence in those you have elected to lead us if you had any confidence in them at all. And in the wilderness, you are utterly reminded that we are not in control no matter how much authority you have. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have on the wall, how much money you have in your bank accounts. Listen, no matter how much science is at our disposal, 
in the wilderness, we are reminded that we are not in control of every aspect of our lives and that we must learn to trust God like never before. Are y'all still here? Yes, sir. That, that, that's where the children of Israel found themselves. If you read their journey from the middle of Exodus all the way through the book of Deuteronomy where they had no answers and assurances of a place where their leadership couldn't guide them in the right direction, a place where things were running out and people were dying, there were more questions again for them than answers and the place where they seemed to go seemed to be no end. A, a place you could have never predicted a place where, where a place where were not they were not prepared to deal with, but in that wilderness, they found out something that I must share with you today. They they found out something. They they realized something. It came clear to them that God was with them. And that God was guiding them even through the wilderness. And God is guiding you and God is guiding us. And he's guiding the world. If they would listen, if they could hear. This reminds us that we are not in this alone. And that we serve a God who desires to guide us through the seasons. The seasons of our wilderness. If you're not in one, one's coming. Or you just got out of one, but it's coming. Are you, are you with me? You're with me. Hear this. Those, those who went before to mark and improve the route were forerunners. You, 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 you picture that. They, 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 in those wooded areas, and they're clearing the way. They're over rivers and they're building bridges. They're doing whatever is necessary to make a way. Is it coming clear? That's what God does for us. They, they were pioneers, the ones who sent before the king to prepare the way as forerunner is defined. So John the Baptist was one man crying in the wilderness. Yet he prepared the way for the Son of God. For each of us in our daily lives interacts with our families, co-workers, neighbors, and others who may know little or nothing about God or his word. Again, there are people you see every day. You may work with them. You may meet them in the grocery store. You may meet them at motor vehicle department. You may meet them God knows where, and they may know nothing about God or his word. Listen, our words, our deeds could pave the way for any one of them to answer God's call at another time. You may not even know the effect that you have on people if you act godly. You still here? Yes, yes. Each of us has opportunities to set an example that will affect their lives, hopefully in a positive way. In this way, each of us is a forerunner, marking and improving the trail through the conduct of our lives. Oh, glory to God. All human life, not some of it, all human life is warfare. The Christian life is most so. But the struggle will not always last. You must remember that. Troubles are removed in love when sin is pardoned. In the great atonement of the death of our Lord Jesus, the mercy of God is exercised in the glory of justice in Christ and his sufferings through repentance receive of the Lord's hand double for their sins. 
For the satisfaction Christ made by his death was of infinite value. The prophet had some reference to the return of the Jews from Babylon. But this is a small event compared to what was pointed out by the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. When John the Baptist proclaimed the approach of Christ, when Western princesses marched through the desert countries, ways were prepared for them and their hindrances were removed. Y'all didn't get that. May the Lord May the Lord prepare our hearts by the teachings of his word and by the convictions of his Holy Spirit that high and proud thoughts may be brought down low, that good desires planted, that crooked and struggled tempers may be straight and softened and every hindrance removed that we may be ready for his will on earth and be prepared for his heavenly kingdom. Hello, somebody. <laughs> what, what are the things that belong to fallen people? What are the things that belong to fallen people or are those things or what are those things that we do in our flesh that we think are so valuable? People value so many things that are really useless. Hear me. They are nothing but grass and flowers that fade. And they're thrown eventually into the fire and burned. And what will be the titles and possessions of a dying sinner of hell when they leave under condemnation? condemnation. The word of the Lord can, what the word of the Lord can do for us, which the flesh cannot. We may think stuff or position or people in high places can do so much for us, but if it's not connected to Almighty God, if it's connected to flesh, it cannot. The glad tidings of the coming of Christ were to be sent to the end of the earth. Satan is a strong armed man, but our Lord Jesus is stronger. And he shall proceed and do all and do all that he purposes. Christ is the good shepherd. He shows his tender care for young converts. That I, I, I wish the, the church would take a closer look and be more tender to the young converts. He, he was concerned about weak believers and those of a sorrowful spirit. By his word, he requires no more service, and, and, and by his providence, he inflicts no more trouble. Then he will strengthen them. Listen, if a person is already wounded, we, we don't beat them more. If a person is down, we don't put our foot on their neck. You do things to raise them, to help them, to move them in the right direction. So may we know our shepherd's voice. May we learn to follow him, proving ourselves to be his sheep. We, we, we must, we must get to that place so that we act and know that we are the sheep of Jesus. Good morning. I believe he was saying to us, in the wilderness. Listen to this. I believe he was simply saying two words to us. 
in the wilderness. Trust me. Wherever you are in your, your personal wilderness, you got all these other voices that you hear, all these other things that's around you, and God is simply saying, trust me. Are you still here? We, we, were, we were at rehearsal yesterday, and, and we got to a part of this song that, 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 that the music was so busy on, on, this, on this CD. It was so busy that I said, man, I can't, I can't hear what they're doing. All the instruments were, were doing something. Uh, collectively, it, it had a good sound, but I could not hear what they were doing. Then I listened to the voice. And the voice led me to the right chord progression to get through the song. Sometimes we can't hear because there's too much noise. But make sure you hear the voice. I believe he was saying in the wilderness, trust me. When absolute uncertainty is around you, he's saying the same thing again. Trust me. When there's no predictable end in sight to the mess that you're in, he says, trust me. Uh, when you don't have answers for your children's questions, trust me. When you don't understand the blows that come to your life, he says, trust me. In this wilderness, our resources are scarce. People we love are dying, and he's simply saying, trust me. Because I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I'm a lawyer in the courtrooms of justice. I'm the nurse when you're in pain. I'm your doctor. I'm your wheel in the midst of a wheel. I'm your joy in the midst of your sorrow. I'm your hope for tomorrow. All you got to do is trust me. Get your eyes on the Christ that loves you more than anything. Somebody say glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. If you heard me today, say praise his name. Do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, say I love you, Lord. Why don't you clap your hands in a mighty praise to the God who has provided all you'll ever need and ever want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, my way maker, my provider, my light, my shelter, my bridge over waters deep. I can trust him today. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Have you heard the voice? When you were in your wilderness, he's there. He's there. He's there.